festive season is beginning soon, but the cheer might not remain for long. We'll have to shell out more money for our flight tickets. Air travel is set to get more expensive for all of us after the government announced a 14% hike in the price of jet fuel or aviation turbine fuel. This is the highest hike in prices of fuel since December 2022. Now, on your screens right now are what the current prices of aviation fuel are and how, after this hike, prices may change. In Delhi, for example, the current price is 98.5 thousand rupees per kiloliter. And with this hike, it would be 1.12 lakh per kiloliter rupees. Now, in Chennai, the current price is 1.2 lakh rupees per kiloliter. And that will rise to 1.16 lakh per kiloliter. Now, the festive season typically we know sees a hike in air travel, and we all have had to dig into our purses and wallets and pay more to visit our home, meet our family and friends, and have a good time. But in the last three months, prices of aviation fuel have gone up by about 24% affecting the operating costs of airlines and therefore the airfares. And that in turn impacts about 1.4 crore domestic passengers. This remember comes after the Union Aviation Minister Jyotiraditya Sindhya in June this year wrote a letter to five states urging them to lower the VAT on aviation turbine fuel, which is what in turn will affect the fuel price. He also talked about it in March last year. Listen in to what he said. If you look at the Laffer curve example in economics, if you lower tax rates, you will actually increase buoyancy of revenues. And I'm very glad to report to this house that uh, prior to my taking over, we had 11 states that charged VAT rates on ATF between 1 to 5%. And we had 25 states that charged VAT rates between 15 to 30 percent. That position today, uh, and through you, Madam, I'd like to thank the chief ministers of all those states. We have reversed that equation. Twelve states have reduced their level of VAT from 25 to 30 percent down to 1 to 4 percent. But why are we talking about the jet fuel hike? Why is the jet fuel so important? Let's explain this to you. Because airlines decide the airfare on the basis of four parts. One, airline component. Second, airport operator fees. Third, fees to the Airports Authority of India. And fourth, the charges or the taxes that are paid to the government. Now, in all of these, the airline component includes the aviation fuel which, by the way, constitutes about 35 to 50 percent of the total cost. Now, in India, state-owned companies like the Indian Oil Corporation and Bharat Petroleum revise this aviation fuel price on the first of every month, which is what happened today, based on the average international price in the previous month. The reasons that impact fuel prices are jet fuel prices that are in line with the global crude oil prices. So international global influences play a large part when deciding the fuel price here in the country. And therefore, the airfares, the flight tickets that we all have to pay for. The government in India, remember, does not establish or regulate airfares. The airlines have been given a free hand to self-regulate and decide on a reasonable airfare. Now, amid this global and domestic uh, you know, situation and the factors that come in and affect our pockets so significantly, where does this leave all of us? Let me take this to my guests tonight who will better help us understand the situation and what really is affecting the flight tickets and the aviation fuel price. I'm joined by Mr. Aris Sharma, former chairperson of ONGC, 
Kishore Subramanian, economic expert, also joins us, and Sarosh Damania, aviation lawyer, joins us tonight. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for speaking to us on Mirror Now. First to you, Mr. R.S. Sharma. Um, you know, this, of course, has been going on for the past three months. We've seen a considerable and consistent rise in the aviation fuel price. Uh, and this time around, it has been the highest this month, which is 14%. What explains this kind of an unprecedented aviation fuel price hike this month? Shreya, the, uh, as you rightly mentioned, you know that uh, these prices depend on the international crude oil prices. And we should realize that we are dependent to the extent of 87% of our consumption, we are dependent on the imports. So import prices, crude prices, somehow they have been uh, consistently rooting high. <clears throat> the, what we show it here, that uh, uh, 86, today the prices have crossed $88 a barrel. So price is going up and uh, the, uh, the oil companies, they have no choice but to pass on that increase to the consumers. Well, that happens for the other uh, petroleum products also, that uh, petrol, diesel, uh, uh, kerosene, somehow we know government's policy, on, they have been uh, asked and they have not been raising the prices for the, uh, you know, fuel prices for the uh, petrol, diesel, uh, but aviation fuel somehow, what I can reckon, they may be thinking this is a, uh, is a bond by a segment of the society who can afford to fly by air, so they can very well afford these increases also. To my mind, that explains that uh, the steep 14% increase that has been given in fact uh, this month. So every month, these companies revise their prices on the first of, uh, of the month. And in the third month, consistently, the prices have gone up. And this month, certainly, they are very, very steep. But I can tell you, it was coming. It's not that something uh, that comes out of blue. It was very much evident the way international prices are rolling. We are in for a steep uh, increase in the all the petroleum product, product prices. Other petroleum product prices have been kept stable, but ATF prices have uh, definitely gone up. So I am not surprised. This was mm. uh, okay. uh, coming, I would say. Okay. Okay, Kishore Subramanian. Yeah, Kishore Subramanian, important there, important point there that Mr. Sharma made, which is that uh, this was coming, this was expected, this is not a surprise. Why is it not a surprise? Do we uh, attribute it to the geopolitical changes that have happened and, uh, you know, the post-pandemic era that we're living in, the Russia conflict, uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict that has affected, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, things around the world, a lot of sectors, including the crude oil sector. Do we attribute it to that or there are other factors that come into play okay so uh, let's understand it from uh, two perspectives number one uh, the crude oil prices globally have gone up so if you look at as mr uh, sharma was mentioning that it is at a six month high it's today crossed 88 dollars so natural uh, uh, transition and pass on of the hike to the consumer is going to happen but look at it from a political situation inside the country at a domestic level. They, the price rise should actually, technically, if you look at it, it should affect the LPG, it should affect the petrol and diesel. But uh, looking at the government situation, you know, petrol, diesel and LPG are very, very, very sensitive. I'm not trying to pass a judgment on the government's decision not to pass on the hike to petrol, diesel or LPG, but definitely that's a large segment and it's a very sensitive segment. Why the consumption of domestic airlines or international airlines, wherever you know, is less than two and a half to three percent of the total population. So obviously, this is a group which can afford the price hike. And also remember that if you look at the 10-year inflation of the airfare price versus 10-year salary hike or affordability or income rise, barring the two uh, years of COVID pandemic. Actually, the air prices inflation is much lesser than the price rise of uh, the salaries. The other important point we need to understand is that 
being a festive season the demand is going to be high and post pandemic the pent up demand has gone up so much that we are on a demand supply mismatch the demand is far higher than the supply available whether it's the number of airlines and you also know a few of the airlines have gone bankrupt so the demand supply mismatch is also there so it's easy to pass off this atf hike to consumers who are on the higher rank because 96 97% of indians travel by train and buses airline is out of their scope at least as far as the per capita income is concerned i think it's a fair rise yes on a jerk it might look that three consecutive months and um, uh, months and this month it's a 14% hike which is going to translate into somewhere around 25 30 not a surprise a group which can afford not being politically correct petrol lpg has also gone down by 157 rupees on the commercial cylinder and 200 rupees on the domestic cylinder yes the opposition parties can cry you and cry on the fact of the matter that this is a political move but yes i think this is the right sector which should be pushed up rather than pressing the button on the common man no no but kishor subramanian uh, you know over the past few years we have seen it's not just uh, uh the wealthier people who travel by air it's also india's middle class the rising middle class which is traveling by air so i think it's a bit unfair to say that you know now that you're earning more you should spend more and you you know it's only fair for you to have that price rise we might as well earn more and spend it on other aspirations and goals that we have in life why should we spend it unnecessarily on the rising air fares but i want to take this across uh, um you know to sarosh damania sarosh damania um you know how do you feel as a citizen this of course comes on to at the end of the day a person uh, who is traveling by flight who has to shell out more money from his or her pocket because somewhere the global crude oil prices have affected the domestic prices here and therefore airlines are taking it through the customer i think it's absolutely unfair to say today stating that consumers who are poor or who are middle class don't travel by airline airlines have become a source of travel for everyone today it is the common man who is traveling by airline same is was the vision of our prime minister also who had stated hawai chappal pehne wale aaj hawai jahaz mein udte so the government's intention is government wants the common man to fly but when you want the common man to fly you need to have some affordability and why only target one sector what is the aviation minister doing when he is making speeches in the parliament stating that i have got the vat reduced i am getting the air fuel prices reduced today where is he standing on this point we have not heard anything from him about taking a stand or requesting the oil pump company or putting a representation before the oil and gas ministry that why is only the aviation sector being targeted or being affected this is completely unjust and unfair from a consumer point of view from a passenger point of view from a airline point of view because the only choice the passenger has because of the maybe and because of the festive season also being a very bad time to get this hike in because already the prices are going to go up because of the festive season now put a higher burden of them on now increasing fuel prices only for the aviation industry will even increase the prices higher so now people who want to travel or people in some case of urgency or for work or students who want to travel back to from back from colleges to for vacation to their houses so these are all people who can't afford higher fares also so that all should be considered it is not only if you see india's aviation market today's market is the economic class which is progressing this is why all the airlines which are coming in are targeting towards economic class most of the airlines who are operating in india are operating only economic yeah. class because of the sheer number of passengers who are traveling by the airlines so of course this is going to affect them and this is a very bad move and this is yeah. you going know to exactly impact them. exactly kish uh, kishor subramanian uh, you know that's that's what i was saying that it's just unfair to say that number 1 and number 2 uh, like sarosh mentioned you know the civil aviation minister uh, had written to states also five states urging them to lower the vat now on the one hand you're saying lower the vat on the other you're increasing the aviation fuel price hike i mean how how do you balance it out where do you find a consensus where it doesn't come on to the common man of the country at the end of the day like 
like I say, and I'm going to repeat myself again and again, that at the end of the day, you and I have to bear the brunt of it. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me let me give a rebuttal. See, I accept with Mr. Saroj that yes, today the common man, as the Prime Minister said, that Hawaii Chappal Pane Wale, Hawaii Jaj Me Chhod Rahe. वो ट्रू है मगर टू द लिमिटेड एक्सटेंट दैट द लार्जर पॉपुलेशन यू हैव टू सी स्टैटिस्टिक्स हियर इज नॉट मिसलीडिंग एट ऑल यू नीड टू स्टिल अंडरस्टैंड दैट लेस देन फाइव परसेंट ट्रेवल इन एयर आई नो इट्स एन एस्पिरेशनल स्टाफ बट लेट एस लेट एस पुट द मैथ क्लियरली बिकॉज यू नो मियर एस्कलेशन ऑफ प्राइस कैन बी क्वाइट मिसलीडिंग अंटिल एंड अनलेस यू अंडरस्टैंड द स्टैटिस्टिक यू टेक एन एवरेज डोमेस्टिक कंज्यूमर हु ट्रेवल्स वो साल में हाउ मेनी टाइम्स विली विली ट्रेवल Five, ten, eight, and in the festive season, maybe a couple of times or two and fro. So the net impact on his income as a percentage, vis-a-vis -vis compared to the OMC rising the price of a gas by hundred or two hundred rupees or petrol by five or ten rupees, is going to have a larger cascading impact on vegetables, consumer durables, the lorry freight. Everything is going to change. So you need to understand this from a micro level. At a macro level, it may seem common man ko to baat ghat raha. That is perfectly all right, but the argument will not hold water if you really go into the micro numbers. Because one and a half to two crore, is, I do not have the data perfectly, but let me tell you, one and a half to two crore may be the max out number who would be traveling. So consider this: the other choice the government has is not to give the hike. The second choice they have is to reduce the VAT, which is a state decision; it's not a union decision. Then the third point is, or else not pass and consume it. I think. passing it if at all justified is to the aviation sector yes one thing can be done as mr saroj said you can't have an upper cap endless you can cap the price where pre pricing mechanism cannot work because like the surge pricing of your cabbies like ola and the uber you don't want aviation to keep surging and i have found it myself when you try to book 10 tickets the price goes up by about 5 to 10% rather than booking one ticket each so the ai generated auto surge on demand is something they can look at and capping the price but is the only sector that should, that should bear the brunt probably a yes and a no but as of now politically it's an election period next year there is a union election you can be rest assured it's not getting passed on to the rest of the consumers whether you like it whether i like it or not saroj sar saroj the mania you want to respond to that also the yes, fact yes. that you know uh, amid all of this amid this kind of a price hike uh, airlines also how can they balance uh, because if this kind of a price hike keeps continuing there will be a deterioration in the quality of services that is provided because the airlines also have to resort to cost cutting how do they maintain this of course it is a very big question one of the that question was one before i answer you let me just come back to mr subramanian now as he said only maybe a common man is traveling five times six times a year now because of this price rise he might not be able to travel that five times also that is the impact this price rise may have on the aviation sector of course i am not saying that you rise on the other sectors how government has to make its economics has to do the work is not our job to tell them but only targeting one sector because a person who is traveling by plane will have no other choice but to bear the brunt now today no, after no, this no. price hike i will not get a ticket for 1500 or 2000 maybe say in for any sector that Mr. is Mr. Saroj, to hit sorry, hard sorry to interrupt but let me take by cheaper tickets and who are finding those tickets who could afford them and could travel by air now those tickets will be a bad, a dream for them because after this prices go up along with the festive season there will be nothing below the range of say 4 5000 so it is going to hit the consumer hard and if it is not about a person's affordability also why should one single sector be targeted this is the main point of it and what is the ministry aviation ministry doing about it and what is the justification for such a hike past 3 months consecutive months almost 30% hike it is a okay. unjustified unreasonable hike there has to be yeah. justification there has to be as, systematic you know, rise just to add to this factor. as opposed to the global crude oil prices which are not rising at such an unprecedented level they are rising but not as high as you know what we are seeing now here the influence no, I, of I, which I, we I, are now seeing here kishor subramanian you wanted to respond 
Yeah, I would like to make one point to Mr. Sarosh. I think he has got certain numbers wrong. For example, let's say when I travel from Chennai to Bangalore, the average price is 1,200 rupees. But the funny part is to travel from Bangalore airport to the city is 2,000 rupees. So telling this fact that a 500 rupees or a 1,000 rupees rise on one ticket, which is going to do twice or thrice a year, is going to say change over his economics for his personal life is not an acceptable argument. Let me tell you. And even if for us... Today, you look at the uh, cost of Uber to take you from the airport to the city is somewhere between 800 to 1,200 rupees. It's 50% or 60% of the air price. So telling me this that this is going to change the economics and he won't be able to travel, I'm not buying this argument. But yes, I think there can be a capping and he's, he's justified in asking the fact of the matter that why one segment? That's a fair question, but certain questions don't have a fair answer. Life is unfair. But you have to be understanding that it's unfair for all of us. Oh, achha, okay, you've, you've gone at a very philosophical level, Kishore Subramaniam. Life is unfair and, uh, you know, uh, uh, let me also go across to Mr. R.S. Sharma. Mr. Sharma, uh, you know, how do you think uh, OMCs and regulatory bodies can... Uh, sort of regulate this kind of a situation and strike a balance uh, and sort of maintain a reasonable level of the ATF? Well, well, I have been very intently listening to both Kishore and uh, Sarosh. And I would say both of them are right in their own way. Uh, uh, no doubts about it. And you are, Shreya, asking that the regulatory body, you know, the government on paper, they have announced that uh, this uh, petroleum product prices, including aviation fuel, they stand deregulated. Time and again, they have said, but we know the ground realities, they are not. Now look at it, the 200 rupees subsidy that has been given on the uh, LPG cylinder, where from the finances will come? I can tell you, it will not come from the government exchequer. It is the oil marketing companies they have to absorb. If they have to absorb, they have to recover it from somewhere else. Petrol, diesel, kerosene, touch me not. These products, price increase not allowed. So where from they recover? And that is the only reason I can see that the steep increase coming for the aviation fuel, because in comparative terms, this is the segment of the society who travel by air, they can afford. All of us, we are discussing, you know, all of us, we can afford. Middle class is again, they are able to afford. The government is more concerned about the lower segment of the society that they, their pockets should not get unduly hurt. So this is the only reason I can perceive that uh, instead of passing that increases to petrol, diesel, kerosene, it is only getting recovered from the aviation fuel. And well, it is unfair. Sarosh is very right. It is a very steep increase, but as I mentioned, I can tell you, uh, I have been, uh, you know, uh, in the deregulated scenario last two decades. I could very much visualize this is bound to happen, and this has happened. So I'm not surprised. Uh, Mr. Sharma, also help me understand. Um... You know, this, this kind of a situation, when it does happen, uh, there are several global factors that are not under our control, but there are several domestic uh, factors that contribute to such a situation as well. Domestically, how are companies and how are the authorities, the relevant authorities and the government prepared uh, to sort of not let this go out of hand or sort of, you know, strike a balance in the prices uh, do we have that kind of an arrangement? Yes, we do have. Petroleum Ministry has a cell, PPAC, Petroleum, uh, you know, uh, uh, Price Regulatory Authority, I'm, not, I'm missing out the expanded form. They do monitoring on very regular basis. All the uh, statistics they have, all the, uh, the data they have, and it is a conscious view taken after that analysis that where the increases get gets passed on. So that is, a, I would say, the conscious decision on the part of the government based on the analysis done by PPAC. And uh, these, uh, uh, three, these oil marketing companies, IOC, HPC, BPC, they have been advised that, uh, well, you pass on the increase uh, to the aviation fuel. That is, uh, that is what it has happened.
at okay, the same okay, price so, increase um, happens for the petrol you know, diesel now, that will be much more sensitive at the time when the uh, you know uh, you know the elections are round the corner that will raise more hue and cry so in competitive terms so they feel this is one segment of the consumer they would be comparatively able to absorb the price increase uh, more comfortably than the others and uh, that is the way it has been happening it has been happening last two decades is not a new thing so that's why i said so uh, i'm not surprised international prices group have been consistently ruling high so these companies cannot continue to absorb the under recoveries those under recoveries have to recover some from somewhere and well the decision the part of the government is to recover it from aviation fuel this is precisely the story okay kishor subramanian you know in in such times such as the volatile fuel prices um you are of course uh, you know you have the point the of the fact that uh, this is only a fair price rise but a lot of people will not agree with you in, in such times how can um, you know a consumer protect herself or himself uh, uh, and also sort of look at transparency and flexibility in terms of uh, the air fares and the air routes that one travels on okay so this these are very personal choices there is no one single answer which can answer your question because it's very broad in nature but let me tell you one thing shreya with reasonable amount of confidence i'll tell you that because of a rise of a 500 1000 2000 rupees on an airfare in a particular domestic route you are not going to have a person cancel the ticket at most what can happen is if i am traveling from destination a to b where there is an overnight train available maybe i can transfer i can travel but what can happen is that you need to understand that the third ac or the second ac of any train today is almost 60% to 80% of airfare and in certain routes like chennai to bangalore and all the train fare is higher than the airfare so i don't see that the demand is going to come down because of that yes i don't have a perfect answer that how do you equal equally distributed and bring a bring a parity among all segments as mr sharma said the petrol kerosene is a no no and you have to understand that these are government decisions and governments are run by politicians you need to be very very clear about that they can't do dharma here and the omcs cannot absorb the under recoveries or we can't keep issuing discounted bonds this is not going to function whether you like it or not the best way to deal with it is if you have an overnight uh, train you can probably discount subsidize the cost or maybe book it in advance anticipating such things because 3 months 4 months in advance when you book you get very good prices and there are these aggregate portals like make my trip where you can lock a price you can do that if you if you really want to but otherwise i don't see any solutions because brent is at 88 but, mind but you but you know kesho no, kesho subramanian it's not necessary that two or three months prior i'll know that i'll be traveling later there are situations where i know but there might be situations where i don't know saroj damania would you stop traveling would you reduce traveling now in the next few no, months no, no, by air? not mr saroj not mr saroj for sure you can be rest assured not anybody in the panel here no no but i of course i agree with the panelists that it is a totally politically motivated situation which i am very sorry but this should not happen one sector should not bear the blunt of because of some elections going to happen but mr saroj you, you have to give an alternate right you have to give an alternate for it but there is no alternate to air travel you have to the person who no, is going to travel by air there is who will absorb it. omc or the government who will absorb it in two hours i can't take the rajdhani overnight to sleep and go over there for the next day there are emergency situations it is also should be understood that it is not only that last minute decisions even middle class people poor people also have emergencies where they need to take air travel there is no subsidy given to them there is no anything given to them in this sector but who will they have to pay the full cost? money about it mr sarosh who will absorb the omcs will absorb no will the government absorb no will the airlines who are already bleeding for decades together will they absorb no one is in the position to absorb then who do they pass it on to that is the problem customer is suffering government is going to earn money airlines are going to make money 
and poor the consumer who has to travel but has no other choice has to shell out big money for to travel well, right? because well, well, it well, is a well. politically motivated situation and the airlines don't want to lose out their profit they are not going to reduce the profit which they make nobody is coming out me, with a statement me, that we try to balance let yeah. me try to balance that these two views as yeah. i can see it is a harsh reality and there is no escape from this let us keep in mind sarosh no escape from this it has to be uh, uh, absorbed like this and only thing is one need to be psychologically prepared perhaps this steep increase the industry was not psychologically prepared i can understand but i told you the reason why it has happened so that is the uh, compulsion on the part of the government these companies they are listed companies they cannot uh, have under recoveries and incur losses of course yeah. the you know one final question before i wrap this uh, discussion up uh, the government currently <coughs> in india does not establish or regulate airfares do you think if the government intervenes it would help matters kishor subramanian Uh, uh, ab absolutely it can matter only if the government has a upper capping on sectorial stuff i don't think so for a listed company like an airline if the government starts controlling the price mechanisms you will get into this older system where you know it will be a social regime and uh, the, the control on capital firms will happen i don't think so economically it's going to work you can have a capping and you can also have this automated ai generated surge in demand price surge which is disproportionate can be capped you can have a upper circuit freeze like stock market but remember i would like to add one more point which we have not dwelt on mm. all these price rises if not observed we are going to be fiscally not prudent about it and ultimately it's going to result in the fiscal deficit of this country going up and that will be a higher price to pay than 1000 rupees on airline remember if your fiscal deficit goes up your rating world over goes down your entire cost of borrowing goes up and your country's gdp goes down which has a far higher impact on the nation i think it's okay to pass it on to probably the most unfair but the lucky uh, group which is able to afford the airfare hmm okay last uh, words rs sharma and saroj damania rs sharma ji first to you uh, would the government intervention help and uh, even though i you know wish to disagree strongly here that the middle class uh, has to pay more and it's okay for the ones who are earning more to pay more but what's the way forward here now well you said will the government intervention help i can tell you this is the current decrease has come because of the government instance their intervention only so i can only say nothing better can be done and we can't expect any relief from uh, what we uh, have this it is a harsh reality we have to absorb it okay so uh, saroj damania uh, last 20 seconds uh, what is the way forward according to you because government should come up i think government should support the industry or <coughs> not at least the aviation minister should take up the issue before the parliament that why is only one sector so it is his job to represent the people at large in who are traveling in aviation industry who are in the industry so he should stand up for it and he should raise his voice or he should raise this issue in the before the parliament as far as caps are concerned time and again we have seen this situation over the years has arisen numerous times and government has not stepped in so i don't think now the government is going to step in we don't have much hope on that but at least the aviation minister should take this issue up and i believe if he also talks to the airlines about maybe uh, sharing the cost or maybe doing something to manage the cost affairs at the festival times that the passengers or the consumers should get at least some benefit and are not at a very grave loss so that would be helpful hmm okay okay he would have been taken oh, into okay the okay fine so <laughs> don't expect any relief coming from there yeah and don't expect it to be passed on to the All petrol right. or oh. diesel oh. because if the government does that there will be no government All, All right politics, all right on that note i'm going to wrap this up arish sharma kishor subramanian 
and Saroj Damania. Gentlemen, thank you very much for talking with Mirror now and sharing your perspective. Of course, at the end of the day, the customers, the Aam Aadmi should not suffer and that's uh, what the government, the authorities, the OMCs, everybody should be thinking of for not just profits but also the Aam Aadmi who has to shell out more money from his or her pocket. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for talking with Mirror now. And with that, uh, we shift our focus on Beyond the Headline. And uh, we will get you other updates. But right now, we are heading in for a break. News and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned to Mirror now.